The views expressed are solely those of the speaker and not necessarily those of Paltalk.com, AVM software, or its advertisers. News Talk is online. News Talk Online is a production of Peltalk.com, the largest multimedia interactive program on the Internet with more than 4 million unique users on demand on iTunes and on YouTube and on my site, GaryBaumgarten.com, where uh, you are encouraged to comment, whether you agree with the author or not. And thanks to our good friends at CRN Digital Talk Radio, where we are syndicated coast to coast across the United States, to uh, 12 million additional households. I'm your host, Gary Baumgarten. Before we get to our great guest today, Gary David Goldberg, I want to point you once again to the blog, GaryBaumgarten.com. Um, there's a lot of commentary and information on there, a lot of it political, talking about the uh, race for the President of the United States. But uh, there is also there are also two uh, very interesting pieces there. One, a first-hand account of what's happening in Buenos Aires right now, because um, there are uh, over 300 square miles of land outside of uh, farmland, Buenos Aires, that are on fire. And uh, the wind has shifted, and the entire city, the metropolitan area, about 12 million people live in that area are under a, a shroud of smoke. It's unbelievable. Believe me, if this had happened in the United States, it would be front page news. We have a couple of great pictures that were taken with the sun attempting to peek its way through. Basically, Buenos Aires is isolated because you can't get in and out of there by plane because it's unsafe, obviously, to fly or on the ground any longer. They had a number of fatal accidents because people couldn't see through the fog of the smoke. And so it's really a huge story. And if it were happening here in the United States, believe me, it would be wall-to-wall -wall coverage on CNN for the world to see. So um, let's hope that the winds shift and people can breathe there. I know that there are a lot of people that are going to the emergency room. It's a big ecological, environmental, and health hazard going on right now in Buenos Aires. But on a happier note, I am so pleased that uh, my guest today is Gary David Goldberg. Uh, who you know as uh, the the owner of the of the black lab called Ubu, Sid Ubu Sid. Uh, Goldberg was born in Brooklyn. He grew up in a noisy apartment building full of extended family, which was ruled by his grandmother, Jenny. She had the family's only telephone, television, and car, thus, thus consolidating her absolute power and controlling all access to the outside world. A prolonged and checkered collegiate career ended at San Diego State University in 1975, many other schools in between, where a professor said to him, Gary, hey, your calling is a writer. You're a writer. You just don't know it. Well, in 69, while working as a waiter in Greenwich Village, uh, Goldberg met his uh, future bride, Diana Meehan. The two decided to hitchhike around the world with their lab uh, their Labrador Retriever, Ubu. They founded a daycare center in Berkeley in the 70s and eventually moved into Southern California. And that dog is honored at the end of each of his TV shows. You see him there with uh, the uh, Frisbee in his mouth, not Gary, the dog. In 1976, Goldberg landed his first real job at MTM Studios, MTM, Mary Tyler Moore, as a writer for the Bob Newhart Show, he stayed there. He became a story editor and a producer at uh, the Tony Randall Show. Then in 78, he was a producer on the Lou Grant Show, which was one of my favorites. Listen to the names of all the shows that Gary put together. In 80, he created and executive produced The Last Resort, also for MTM. Then in 81, he formed his own company, Ubu Productions. Uh, nine television series were created, and you know them all. The enormously successful Family Ties, which ran on NBC. The critically acclaimed uh, Brooklyn Bridge on CBS. Uh, it just goes on and on and on. He uh, produced uh, Spin City, which ran for six seasons on ABC. He's got so many honors during his career, including an Emmy and a Golden Globe. Uh, and if I were to read them all, we wouldn't get a chance to talk to him. Gary David Goldberg, welcome to News Talk Online on PalTalk.com. Well, thanks for having me, Gary. It's my pleasure. 
You know, I did not know. I mean, I know that everybody who makes it big in Hollywood starved and 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 worked their way up. I had never heard your story before. I've known your successes, of course, but I didn't know all the trials and tribulations that led to that point. When did you realize that this is what you wanted to do? Um, I was 31 before I started considering the idea of being a writer. But just to backtrack, they weren't really, um, those were very happy times for us, for me and for Diana. You know, uh, we were, we had made a choice to kind of accumulate adventures rather than money or furniture or anything like that. You know, and when it was just the two of us with Ubu, we really saw the entire world. You know, we hitchhiked all the way from Amsterdam through Istanbul over to Israel, lived on a kibbutz, uh, made our way back, uh, lived in Greece for four months. We were, uh, we were very happy. We just didn't have any money. So I, I wouldn't want you to think we were really suffering there. And, and in terms of those early shows that you mentioned, New Heart, Lou Grant, I was a very minor player on those shows, so I, I can't take very much credit for it. I was fortunate enough to start at MTM with some extraordinarily talented uh, writers, producers, Jim Brooks, Alan Burns, Gene Reynolds, uh, Seth Freeman, and, and, you know, I was able to, Tom Patchett, Jay Tarsus, I was able to then, you know, watch them and, uh, I, from, a, from a position of safety because I was so small and unimportant and then kind of uh, worked my way slowly up. But uh, th- those were wonderful times all the way around. I believe, and maybe this be, it's a nostalgic look back to those days, that some of those programs were the best shows in television. In fact, a lot of them are in rerun even till today. Uh, they have a, a lasting value that some of the new programs I don't think ever will have. Well, th- that may be so, you know, and again, you're looking at the work of, of real geniuses, you know, guys like Jim Brooks or Gene Reynolds, you know, uh, Larry Gelbart on MASH. These were extraordinarily talented people who, who were making their way in that medium at that time. And also, at, at that time, television, the whole purpose of television was different. It was really part of a national campfire. You know, you only had three networks. Uh, really, no one was losing money. So there was more time and tolerance for shows to develop. Uh, Norman Lear, you know, anyone working in television owes a debt to Norman. All three networks originally had turned down All in the Family. 